Today I'm going to be installing Tain S-Tech lowering springs onto my 2005 Toyota Corolla XRS. And to go along with these, I also have KYB XLG shocks, which are 10% stiffer than stock and are going to pair with these lowering springs really nicely. Now I've got a few things here to get this project started, so let's go ahead and unbox everything. And here are the shocks taken out. Uh, yeah, they look pretty good. So I've got uh, these to unbox now, it's a little rubber stuff. And then obviously the springs are there. And then these are the old uh, struts for that car. So I'm going to take these apart and I'm just gonna use the top hats for all of them. This way I didn't have to buy uh, new ones because these and, and this already cost me enough so i just wanted to save a little bit of money and, and reuse some old stuff here since all that is still good i'm also not going to be using this bump stop i already have uh, another bump stop that i got with the lowering springs so this is just going to go back into the box Here we are, this is the rubber isolator for the front. I figured rubber stuff I wanted to have new, uh, just you know, so it lasts longer. So this isolator will just mount like this. I also had these dust boots that I got with the lowering springs. However, they're much smaller than, uh, than the replacements. So I'm not sure how well these would work. That's why I got these. I might use both. So first thing I'm going to do with all this is I actually do nothing because I'm coming over here to the old struts and I'm going to pull off the top hat here. After I pull this off, I'm going to uh, clean up all this rust here. Obviously this is a Wisconsin car. That car is from Wisconsin. So there is a little bit of rust and other debris here that I'm going to clean up before I actually use these. So now I'm going to give you a closer look at how to take your old strut apart and then build the new one. So first off, we got a dust shield here that we've got to pop off. It comes off pretty easily, you just got to find the right angle to peel it off. It is just a piece of rubber and then we set it aside. Now I'm going to be using spring clamps, uh, which you should always be very careful when you use spring clamps or compressed springs. And the way that you can be safe with these is don't over tighten the absolute hell out of it. It's not necessary, you don't have to do that. What I like about this one is it's got these locking pins here. So in case it slips, it's got this pin to, uh, to keep it secure in here. I'll also have a link to these spring clamps in the description down below in case you're interested in buying these. Now this one's snug, gonna lock the pins here. There we go. And now I'm just gonna take a wrench no need to use an impact or anything, just take a wrench and just slowly start turning this and tightening it. And then just do this evenly on both sides. Obviously you don't 
want to have this one have too much tension and this one not enough. These compressors should be more or less even with each other in terms of pressure. And there we go. No need to tighten the absolute hell out of it. Just snug it to where there's not as much pressure on here anymore. I'm just gonna take my impact with a 19 millimeter socket up to the top bolt here. And there we go. No stress, it comes off pretty nicely. If you're reusing your old shock, then obviously just pull the spring up and take out the bump stop then you can replace the isolator if you want. This one still looks in good condition, but if you want to replace this rubber isolator, I'll also have a link to that in the description below. Pretty much everything I'm using here, I'll have a link to in the description below. Now, if you need to modify your old bump stop, if you don't have this new one or you lost it or whatever, cutting about half of the old one should get you exactly where you wanna be. So, when building this new one, I've got a couple new items here, new bump stop, new bottom rubber isolator, new dust cap, dust shield, dust, you know, whatever. So first, let's take off this nut here. That's just gonna get in our way. Then I'm going to align the isolator down here, and there is an actual section. You can see where this uh, little lip bump, whatever, and this right here lines up with this little bump here on the strut shock sorry the whole assembly is a strut this is just a shock i want to get my terminology right here <laughs> all right now time to put the bump stop on let's see how nicely it goes on first try and uh, actually not too bad it's a little tight here with the other strut i put together i had a little bit of an issue with the bump stop i had to drill the inside a little bit to make it easier to go on but this one, I don't think that'll be necessary. All right, so I've got the bump stop on. Now I'm just gonna throw the dust shield in here, just like that, and then, and then the spring, the main event. So just setting it in here is pretty easy. You just line the end of the spring here up with this lip right here, and that's how you know the spring is in the right position. So there we go, and the spring is in here. Now I'm gonna be reusing part of this old dust boot. I'm not going to be reusing the whole thing, mainly just the top section here. So scissors it will do the job. I mean, it's it's rubber and it's pretty old rubber at that. So I'm just going to cut along here. And perfect. I wanted to reuse this section because you can see here from the old spring, there's a little indent. So this will make it a little bit easier to make sure the new spring isn't going to be misaligned. So I'm just gonna install it there. Perfect. Now this first part here, I'm just gonna set it down and line it up. And it is now in there. And then the actual top hat gets put on. I'm just gonna keep aligning pressure so this on the bottom here doesn't get misaligned. This is the first time I've ever heard a train come through here. huh? And then send it. And there we go, it is fully assembled. I'm just gonna make sure the spring is aligned here. It's not coming off, nope, we are good. Dust shield can go back on. Uh, I'm gonna clean up this rust here, but that's okay. But there you have it. Uh, it's not as stressful as some people make it out to be. It's, it's, it's pretty harmless. So, we've got one of the front ones done. Now let me show you how to do the rear. Again, for taking apart the rear, it's very similar to taking apart the front. And just don't go crazy, you'll be fine. Taking this apart is not very stressful either. I'm just gonna get a couple spring clamps on here. Now with the clamps on, I'm just going to snug them down. Again, no need to over tighten these very much, just a little bit. Think about it like the clamps are just giving the springs a hug, you know? So that should be good enough there. Nothing too crazy with the spring clamps. And then 17 millimeter on top. Whoa! Yeah, see, just like that. I didn't, I haven't tightened down the spring very much and it's only just popped it out a little bit. Maybe I could have tightened it a little bit more, but uh, even then, that didn't look like it would have hurt anybody. All right, 
so then top hat out. And then this, I'm gonna reuse the entirety of this, so this little uh, plastic dust shield, this uh, bump guard, this metal, whatever this is, and the rubber isolator on the top, I'm gonna be reusing that. Before we continue, let's go ahead and take all the tension off of the spring. All right, so now we've got our new stuff here and our old stuff here. So let's go ahead and piece this all together, shall we? Let's start off by taking the nut off. Then I'm going to put this old dust shield in here. And there's a little spot for this to be seated. It'll seat just like that. And just like the front, there's a little lip here and that is where the spring goes. On the spring, there's one side that's a little smaller than the other. Don't put the spring in like this because it's too big for the base. The small side has gotta be on the base. So the small side goes down and then just like that. And you'll know the spring's in the right place when it's resting against this. Now we've got this old isolator here and actually what I'm gonna be doing with this is putting the isolator back in here before I carry on. Now, when you install this, pay attention to where this bottom mount is. You want these to be parallel like this. So if the bottom mount is like this, you want this to be parallel with it. It doesn't matter which side, just as long as it's parallel. If you have it like this, it's not gonna work. Now to get the bolts on, obviously, you can see the threads don't come out yet. Uh, you, you've gotta push it together. So, like this. Now you see the threads come out. I'm gonna use a spring clamp to make it a lot easier. I'm just gonna clamp down on the spring here, just so it makes it easier to catch the threads in there. All right, with the spring clamped, now it's gonna make exposing these threads up here a lot easier. There we go, the threads have caught. Now there's a little Allen key in there, so what I'm going to do is use an Allen key and a 17 millimeter wrench rather than the impact. The six millimeter hex is right there and go to work. And I've hit the bottom there. So there you go. I think it's a little easier to do it that way instead of using the impact uh, just so the threads here aren't spinning or anything. Now it's time to take the spring clamps off. So, now you see them, and now you don't. So we've got all four struts here put together, new shocks, new springs, and now it is time to install these in the car. I do want to mention before I install these, you might be comparing the new one to the old one and thinking that it hasn't been lowered at all. When it's outside the car, the struts, even with the lowering springs, look pretty much the same height, but with the way that these springs are designed, they will be lower. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and put these in. So this is kind of interesting. First of all, uh, as you can see, pretty rusty. It's a good thing that we're taking this out because uh, the, yeah, that kind of sucks. The other thing is this is what this bolt is supposed to look like. And this is what this top one looks like. You can see it's thinner. The bolt doesn't stick out on this side. It's got a washer here. This is not the correct bolt. Oh, I'm so not looking forward to working with all this rusty stuff here. I am having an exceptionally tough time taking these bolts out. It's mainly just because they're rusty, so I'm just using, as you can see by how wet it is, I'm using a lot of WD-40. I got this one out finally after about 15 minutes. Uh, this one's probably a pretty similar story. I tried using uh, this breaker bar and this breaker bar together 
and I still couldn't get it. So I'm just waiting for the WD-40 to kind of really soak in there. Probably gonna spray it a few more times. In fact, I'm probably gonna spray it again now. There we go. Just, uh, and I'm, I'm being quite careless about where it goes. I just want this whole thing to get soaked up with WD-40. We can still move on. So we've got this top bolt right here for the sway bar end link. These ones are pretty annoying too. This one's super rusted, as you can see. Uh, obviously all of these have the little hex Allen head, but that is just going to strip out. So instead, I'm gonna try and use an impact and and it's probably spinning i would guess so so because it's uh it's spinning and it's having just a difficult time what i'm gonna do is use this little vice clamp and clamp down on the little metal section behind it and these are pretty thin so by clamping down on it i'm still not going to be damaging the boot here uh, which is good because I do want to reuse this. The boot is fine, the joint is fine, I just need the bolt to come out. There we go, clamp down the metal, and this usually takes a couple attempts to get out. Yep, so now it's started to spin again. Just gonna tighten it up a little more. So I wasn't careful enough, and there's grease. So uh, this link is trash then because I tore the boot. Okay, well, we still have to remove it anyway, so let's continue. Well, I may have destroyed the end link, but the bolt is now removed. So now I can go ahead and pop that off. That's kind of weird. I'm going to out, out. There you go. Wow, that took a lot of effort, but it's uh, slowly getting there. I mean, I suppose it didn't take a lot of effort. I just went at it with the with the impact, but still. The impact is a lifesaver. Genuinely, this thing is a lifesaver. Wow, I am impressed. I put a breaker bar on there and then use all of my leg strength. And I'm not necessarily a weak person, but wow, I cannot do what this thing could do. Oh, and I didn't show you guys, but I did have a jack stand underneath the uh, the hub here. So I guess underneath the, the lug studs here. So that way I'm not gonna risk hanging it by the brake line here and, and and breaking this so anyway every bolt is now out let's go ahead and take this thing out are in this top one is a little different to the bottom one uh, at, at least here yours should be exactly the same if you're doing this project on your own I mean this isn't this is what, what was on there before this is not a strut bolt this is not for bolting down struts this just looks like a bolt from Menards or something so um, yeah it, I'm, I'm definitely not gonna be using this one again and look how rusted that is too yeah no thanks well, I thought I had an extra one of these. Apparently I didn't. So I'm gonna reuse this one for now. Uh, I will get this replaced. It probably isn't going to be that big of a deal if I continue to use it for uh, a while. I think this should be okay. Oh, and I've already put the 14 mil back here too. So everything here is done and I've already done everything on the passenger side as well. So let's get the wheel on and get it on the ground. All right, the wheel is on there. I'm gonna torque it when it's on the ground. Let's go ahead and see how much lower this looks.
honestly, that's pretty perfect. I was worried that this was gonna be way too low here, but actually, that's really good. And these are used springs. Uh, thank you again to Just a CVT on Instagram for selling me these a few months ago. That's good. That's good. That is pretty much exactly where I would want it to be. I don't really like driving cars that are super low. Like say this fender lip is right down here. Not really a big fan of that. The fact that I can still fit my hand in there, good. I like my drivability. But this is pretty much the exact same height as, uh, as I've set here with my coilovers. Yeah, that's pretty much the exact same height. So there we go. Yeah, it is now lowered and it's looking good. Obviously still gotta do the rear so I can still fit four fingers in there. So we gotta fix that. But overall, yeah, I am very pleased with that. So there you have it. There's my initial reaction, at least for the front anyway. I think that's pretty perfect. Let's go ahead and do the rears. I'm not gonna lie, this one's a little higher than I thought it was gonna be. Thought it was gonna be a little lower, uh, which is, I mean, this is fine. Honestly, probably for the best that this is a little bit high. Obviously these quarter panels aren't rolled or anything, so they still got this lip here. So it, I don't see this as necessarily a negative thing. Now don't take this the wrong way. I am not disappointed. This is still a good height. Uh, it's a more subtle drop in the rear, I suppose, but it's not bad at all. I would guess it doesn't drop as much because obviously the front of the car has more weight. This doesn't have as much weight back here because, you know, there's, it's the trunk, there's no engine in here. And the spring rate for the front and the rear is probably the same. So you have less weight in the rear on the same spring rate. It's going to be a little taller, but that's okay. So everything is all installed. I'm gonna go ahead and test drive the car and make sure there's no weird clunking noises or any issues with the suspension. I mainly wanna see if there's gonna be any noises from the front to sway bar end links because I did reuse the old ones and I know I ripped the boot a little bit on, the, on this front left one. So I wanna go ahead and check and make sure that there's no odd noises and the suspension feels good and there's not gonna be any issues driving like this. Alrighty, so we are here in the XRS with the new struts put together, installed, everything. You guys know this, you just watched the video. So mainly, I'm just gonna do a really quick test drive, less than five miles. I just wanna get a feel for the car. I wanna see if there's uh, any noises that I need to address. I wanna see if there's, uh, Basically, all I'm doing here is I just want to see, I just want to feel out the car and see if there's any problems that come up. And so far, so good. My initial impressions, it's obviously a little stiffer. It is softer than on coilovers though, and my blue Corolla. Now I'm not gonna be pushing this new suspension to the limit or anything. Obviously that's not what I'm trying to do by uh, just test driving. I just wanna get a feel for the car. So far, I haven't seen any issues arise. It's all looking and feeling pretty good. There we go, a little bump there. Didn't feel anything abnormal. It all felt pretty good. Whoa, check out the 458. Jeez. 
That's nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna do a full circle around and we'll head back to the garage. Every time I've installed suspension before it was coilovers, I had at least one minor thing I needed to tweak before it was uh, all ready to go. But with this one, and it might help that the springs are used as well, so they're already broken in. Uh, it's, it feels like it seems pretty good. Yeah, I would say overall, I am very pleased with the performance. I mean, obviously I've, I've only driven it maybe two miles so far, but still, yeah, it's working well. And with that, this concludes the test drive. We're back at the garage. And here we are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the XRS back into the garage. And that finishes up the lowering spring install on my Corolla XRS. Thank you everyone very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.